Hello everybody, welcome to another Weathering Waves video. Uh, I really hope you all are having a wonderful day. Today, what we are going to be getting into is a reaction to Lal Shinya's video, Weathering Waves Will Succeed. Lal Shinya is a, uh, a guy who has posted seven videos. Uh, one of them is 11 seconds long, I'm not really going to count it. Uh, six videos, basically, and already has 3.2k subscribers. This guy's content is really, really good. Um, he's, he's very well spoken. He's an incredible content creator. He's nice to listen to. Uh, I'm kind of glazing right now. This guy's great. I've already subscribed to him. I've liked the video. I've watched all his other videos too. Uh, we're going to get into this one. I'm really excited for this. Uh, I wanted to save it for the channel, so let's do it. But I did hear that this is a pretty good video. Let's hear why Weathering Waves will succeed from Lal Shinya. Go over there and give him a like and subscribe on this video. Uh, and yeah. Greetings, travelers. The amount of discourse and drama surrounding the release of Kuro Games' upcoming Gacha Weathering Waves has been absolutely massive. Mm -hmm. Let's go into some of these main points that Doomsayers have been making. The lack of marketing. At the time of writing this video, we have exactly 30 days until the release of Weathering Waves, and as someone who refuses to browse the internet without adblock, I've seen close to a dozen ads throughout various platforms like YouTube, Twitch, Reddit, TikTok, and Instagram. Hell yeah. Kuro definitely learned their lesson from their previous game, punishing Grey Raven, and very clearly has been engaging their marketing team into pushing out ads. I really have not seen a lot of Wuthering Waves ads, um, and if I have, I would assume it's probably because I play gotcha games and I've said Wuthering Waves in front of my technological devices many, many times that has, you know, probably made them, you know, have them, I, I probably fit, I, I probably went into an algorithm somewhere to get Wuthering Waves ads, but even then I still haven't really seen many of them. And again, I do use ad block, things like that. But anyway, I mean, the game's coming out May 22nd. Uh, like you said, I'm really, really excited for this. Within this next month, I would anticipate- It doesn't really matter, right? Like, okay, so it really, it matters how good their marketing is, but clearly they've marketed it well enough. It already has more pre-registers. Um, it's, it's already, you know, if you were to just base it off pre-registers, it's already more popular than Honkai Star Rail and Genshin Impact. Uh, obviously that won't stay. Uh, those numbers will fall off, but that's how many people want to pre-register want to try this game out want to play it so i'm just really hoping that kuro really lands on this release uh lands on their feet smurfs uh makes the changes that people want and keeps as much of that audience as possible to pay kuro starts to make even greater strides with their campaign alongside the various twitch and youtube content creator sponsors that have been rumored Speaking of content creators, are we forgetting the fact that Kuro has an entire campaign dedicated to encouraging content creators to make content for their game? Last year on April 10th, 2023, Kuro announced Project Wave, encouraging creators to produce content centered around weathering waves, with cash and merchandise incentives, and early access into WooBaz mm. development info and CBTs. It's really good the idea. The program initially closed on May 20th, 2023, but was reintroduced this year back in January 18th and ran until February 11th. Creators that produced high quality content had the opportunity to sign long-term contracts with Kuro, giving them a direct line for communication and feedback. The next topic is the lack of content to report on. Various creators have been extremely vocal about there not being enough information surrounding the game to report on, or that the current information surrounding the game will become outdated by the time the game launches. Had to take a moment regarding the stop process. It's like their first time these creators have ever covered a game that isn't released yet and is still in closed testing. Yes, most of the information True. that is being covered during beta will be defunct by the time the game comes out. Crow has already stated that 90% of the story alone was reworked during development. Nobody should. Hopefully, that's that's like reworked in a good way. I believe people have been saying it's been reworked in a good way. I know that the second closed beta test was you know every closed beta test has been better than the previous one be surprised that things change from beta to release and this isn't a bad thing secondly there is enough information out surrounding the game weathering waves had two cbt's closed beta tests which both lasted roughly a month each the majority of the characters systems progression and story is all out there for everyone to see and i would know i've been doing a ton of research due to this game being brand new there's no easy way to ingest information or one-stop shop wiki like these creators are used to. 
Creators have True. gotten lazy and expect them to be handed content on a silver platter without doing research and due diligence while having the nerve to say that Wuthering Waves will flop due to these. Yeah, honestly, imagine like just being really lazy with your content and then like reacting to someone else's content. It really couldn't be me, but as for the people who are out there doing it, uh, it's just crazy. No, but I I definitely wouldn't be doing as much reactions as I would be doing a lot more actually playing the fucking game for the channel and making content based off of, you know, what I find to be true and my own personal experiences playing the closed beta test if I was uh, accepted into it. So this is really our only option at the current moment as a really small creator that, you know, the game doesn't know. A few creators were complaining that the Weathering Waves YouTube was relatively dead considering how close to the release we are. Comparing the Weathering Waves channel to Genshin's prior to launch, we're met with a pretty similar experience. Genshin, June 7th, 2019, <laughs> a two minute announcement trailer with some very basic exploration and cutscenes. August 1st, 2019, a four minute video with some extremely basic gameplay. January 14th, 2020, a one minute preview of his own, nothing of substance. August 6, 2020, a 1 minute 30 second state of gameplay with absurdly basic mechanics. September 27, 2020, one day before the game launched. Two so like five or six videos. Slash announcement trailer. That's five videos, right? Outside of the various That's it. videos that I've listed above, the only other content uploaded to their YouTube was the OST and three character demos. People have been expecting Kuro to simply throw millions upon millions of dollars into marketing weathering waves. Kuro Games is a relatively smaller company compared to MiHoYo. That's true. Who prior to launching Game Impact makes already had so a much money. successful game with Honkai Impact 3rd. While punishing Grey Raven was semi-popular, it's obvious Kuro has a, the fraction of a budget Hoyo had when producing and launching Genshin. Oh my the goodness. A combo's happening in the back. Genshin Impact. There's a lot to unpack to the statement. Let's address the elephant in the room and give some credit where credit is due. Just Genshin absorb the echo for that less character. created the genre of the fantasy open world gacha RPG. Critics and lovers of the game and genre alike can agree to this, but this does not discredit any future game developers attempting to capitalize on the genre. Demon Souls created the Souls-like genre. Does that mean we should start to discredit developers that aren't from software for releasing titles in the genre? No. Without the trailblazers no. from software, we wouldn't have gotten great games like Remnant 1 and 2, Neo 2, Lies of P, Phantom Blade Zero, Black Myth Wukong, and Rise of the Ronin, and other various indie titles that fit the concept of the Souls-like genre. Hell yeah. There's been a ton of flack given to Kuro for copying the UI elements of Genshin. And the majority of the Like, there's only so much you can do with a UI that makes sense, guys. Like, there, there really is. Like, you want to put your health bar in the center. Like, you want to put, like, ammo abilities to the side. You want to put, like, where your character... I don't think that matters at all. And honestly, I would prefer it. It's like when all phone companies go to the USB C, everyone will be happier because it's no longer, oh, you don't have this very specific charger. Oh, man, that sucks. Well, I guess I can't use your charger. Hey, you got a charger, bro? Yeah, no, I got a, I got a Apple iPod 4 charger, bro. Oh, okay. Why? Why can't we all just have USB-C, you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like it's just better to have a very similar HUD across the board in every game because it adds more, um, like, you come into a game knowing where to look for things. I think being able to intuit very specific things is, is, uh, is good, for sure. Games that I spoke on earlier. Like, when you play a gacha... You know, you're going to have, like, characters that you collect and and gear that you collect for those characters. And you're going to be able to, like, switch characters and make teams with uh, groups of characters. It's like every single gotcha is like that. Why are we going to change it? You know, why are we going to change it? The UI elements remain mostly the same as the OG Demon Souls. But isn't necessarily a bad thing. There's only so many ways to display information on your screen that exactly to the eye makes sense and users are familiar with true people often forget the massive amounts of research and development feedback and money that went into perfecting the ui on major titles there's also a need in our case for the ui to seamlessly be able to transition between pc and mobile and eventually console 
Let's go into a couple more specifics. League of Legends, Smite, and Dota 2 all share an extremely similar UI. Fortnite, PUBG, and Apex all share a similar UI. True. Hell, even Windows, Mac OS, and Linux all share a similar UI. Some creators have Linux, you to complain about the dark Bro uses the a Linux of weathering waves. Either they're farming or just ignorant. But this was a very obvious intent of John looks so the cool. Story. The Lament was meant to be a catastrophic event, wiping out oh, this got farming or just ignorant. But this was a very obvious intent of Kuro, given Mac and Dome Apex all share a similar UI. Hell, even Windows, Mac OS, and Linux all share a similar UI. He's, get back. He's about to make a killer point after this. Some creators have had the audacity to complain about the dark, gloomy atmosphere of weathering waves. Yep. Either they're farming or just ignorant. They're definitely this just was ignorant. The very obvious intent of Kuro, given the story. The Lament was meant to be a catastrophic event, wiping out the majority of humans on Sol 3. Le it, it should be this way. It should be this way. And in fact, like, the way that the the fact that the world is dark and gloomy sets the tone for the fact that like we're here to save it and we're here to do good things and also it kind of highlights the bright neon like actions and abilities that the characters have like when Gian, i think he's the character who like summons the big dragon that helps with his attacks whenever he uses ultimate when you get the blue neon dragon, like, absolutely slice and throw him, and, like, the neon blades, uh, swings, like, blasting through, it, you, it, it pops so much more. It really, it really makes you feel like the main character. Leaving humanity on the brink of extinction. The calamity caused various abnormalities on Soul 3, leaving behind waveward phenomenons, which has significantly impacted the planet. The story is literally post-apocalyptic. The atmosphere and artistic style choices are a direct representation of the story. That makes sense. I've heard the phrase thrown around, if Wuthering Waves does not kill Genshin, it will be considered a flop. No. Firstly, let's address- If Wuthering Waves even moderately takes a piece of Genshin's pie, that's a W. That's a W. You're not going to beat Genshin. Genshin came out during COVID. You know, it's... They already had Honkai Impact, extremely popular. You know, they already had a dedicated, you know, player base. They copied Breath of the Wild, which is an extremely, extremely popular game. You know. Address the second elephant in the room. Other ways will not come close to the massive success that is Genshin. At least on launch, and that's not a bad thing. The statement to me yeah, is it doesn't have to. bonkers. And this creator clearly has not been part of the MMO space and followed all of the World of Warcraft killers over the past 15 years. Every yeah, they all killed WoW, WoW, I heard. WoW killer at some yeah, point. every single one of them killed Anyone WoW. who thinks or even wants Weathering Waves to be the Genshin killer is huffing copium or has an unhealthy view on gaming. True. Uh, what's it called? When people were like, when I'm, so I play New World, right? I have played New World and I really, really like the game. People are like, when will this game die? This game is dead. This game, like, why do you want the game to die? I think, every, like, whether you're going to play it or not is one thing, but you should want the game to be good because that pushes any other MMO that ever comes out with, like, action combat and, and like, a similar type of, like, crafting and gathering as New World. Like, the New World crafting and gathering system and, and like, all that is insane, and it's one of the things that people praise the game the most for as well as like the sound design in the game that raises the bar for other MMOs. If you play new world and then you play a game with a dog shit sound design and like kind of a mid, not very fun crafting system, you can then compare it to new world and be like, okay, all right, devs, why don't you step it up? Like these new world devs did in these aspects, like competition breeds better games, like across the board, right? Like it's, if World of Warcraft was really good, which uh, in my opinion it's not, um, but like if World of Warcraft, you know, I would say generally people would probably consider it a good game, or at least it was before, right? And then another game very similar to WoW comes out, and they're both neck and neck competing with each other. They're both trying to out better the other one, 
And both of the games are just getting better for it, right? Imagine, right, if Genshin had a direct uh, competition from another company. It, it's like Honkai Star Rail doing great is not even that bad for Genshin because the thing is, Hoyoverse is the, you know, Hoyoverse has both the games and they get the money no matter what, right? They get the money no matter what. So if people are like, I'm going to quit Genshin. I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to Honkai Star Round. I'm going to spend all my money there. Hoyo versus like, okay, we, we make the same exact amount of money still then. But this game coming in made by a different company, especially with the same like action combat, kind of in the same niche as Genshin. Uh, I mean, in the same genre and everything. Like, this is going to create competition with Genshin as long as, you know, Kuro can land on their feet with this game. And hopefully it will make Genshin better. If not, then Hoyo verse will start to lose. Yeah, Genshin will start to lose the war against Wuthering Waves, right? If Wuthering Waves is consistently released is great, every patch is great, there's a bunch of endgame, people are having extreme amounts of fun, their character design is off the charts, Wuthering Waves, honestly, a few years down the line, might start to just to beat them, right? I see no reason, like, Honkai Star Rail is already beating Genshin. They've already beat them multiple times in the, uh, in the revenue charts. There's no reason why if Weathering Waves is insane, they can't take, over, over a long period of time, they can't take that success from Genshin. You know, at least a few times. Like, maybe during extremely cool banners and, like, really big patches, they can outsell Genshin. Like, a few years down the line. I'm saying a few years down the line because Genshin will have a massive head start due to having such a massive, um, dedicated player base. You know? So... It'll take a while for Weathering Waves to catch up, even if it's insanely good, and even if it's arguably better than Genshin, it will take a long time for it to catch up and take a larger piece of the, the gacha pie than Genshin has. But I believe it could 100% happen if uh, Hoyoverse doesn't pull their head out of their ass with Genshin. Games shouldn't kill other games. They should compete with each other. More than one game can exist in a genre without them killing each other. Any company holding a monopoly on a genre is straight up loss for you, the consumer. Competition encourages companies to innovate new ideas and strategies. It encourages them to improve their product and make the consumer experience better than their competitor. Both companies existing in the same place is a net win for both communities, and we should not be preying on the downfall of either game. Let's talk about the difficulty. Graders have been concerned about the difficulty presented in Wuthering Waves. I can understand where they're coming from with this concern. The casual audience is what is going to make or break Weathering Waves' general launch and overall success. This may be the first major point I agree with, where a vast majority of player base from games like Genshin and Honkai are in for a rude awakening. The standard combat is a majorly different experience in Weathering Waves, where the timing, mm -hmm. dodges, parries, and combos excel. I don't think it's actually going to cause that much of a problem for Honkai Star Rail. Because Honkai Star Rail is an entirely different gameplay experience. Like, it, it's a whole, it, like, the turn-based, the, like, Honkai Star Rail will 100% keep its player base. I don't think people are going to jump ship from a game with the style of Honkai Star Rail and then go to Wuthering Waves and, like, drop one for the other. But I definitely think if you're playing two games, they're both gotchas, they're both action combat. They're both, you know, they're they're both so similar in so many ways. But one actually has endgame. One maybe releases cooler characters, arguably. You know, one gives more rewards. One seems like it actually cares about their player base. One pushes out patches that are a lot more interesting, has a lot more QOL. Then I could 100% see that. Like, I can 100% see people who are playing Genshin as, like, their main game drop, you know, Genshin down to second place for Weathering Waves. I can 100% see that. But, like, if you're, if you're Honkai Star Rail main game, like, you know, I feel like it'll be, yeah, I feel like you're not going to drop it because there's enough differences, especially in, like, the combat and, like, the team building style and everything due to the fact that it's turn-based and things like that. From the majority of footage in CBT 1 and 2, the general story mode and open world exploration seem very easy enough for the casuals to get through. 
Although I do foresee a ton of people quitting on various bosses or crying to Reddit and Twitter regarding difficulty. It seems whether well, I hope they, I to... hope Hero completely fucking ignore them. Because here's the thing, right? Ride the line. Things might be hard mechanically to do. Due to the game being action combat, you, unless things are like level cap locked, you should 100% be able to challenge things that are way out of your league. And if you are the god of iframes and the god of mechanics, you should be able to punch way above your level if you have a really, if you know, your gameplay has really high skill cap. Uh, but if you are like kind of not great at the game, you're not great at the action combat, you don't have good mechanics, things like that eventually right you won't be able to push above your weight and sometimes you might not even be able to fight something that you should be able to fight maybe you have to farm a little bit more you you know you out gear it you out level it things like that right that that'll be possible it's a gotcha game if you spend money on the game or if you farm long enough you will eventually be able to beat pretty much everything right it, it'll just take a lot more time for those players who are unskilled. And honestly, if you're not skilled and you're not playing the game because you're like, you're really good at it or you're badass, then obviously, you know, you're going to, you're probably going to be the type of person that likes doing the farming and that stuff anyway, you know, prefers that side of the game. So yeah, if you're a casual player and you just want to farm and everything and you want to fight things when you, can outgear them and it's a little bit easier for you. There's you can do that. If you want to be a really good player and you want to like fight multiple groups of mobs at once and you want to like punch above your above your level in terms of like fighting bosses that maybe you should, you know, it's recommended that you're like a few levels higher if you do this and you want to just try it anyway because you're really good mechanically, then you can do that too. Line between giving us And that's what I love about action combat, baby. That's what I love about action combat a decent challenge while not being your standard brainless button mash like Genshin. Wuthering Waves will be offering increased difficulties for various content as well, giving the hardcore players something to strive for for good yeah. rewards. Sounds Souls great. like games taught us all a valuable lesson. People don't want to steamroll content. They want to be challenged. They want to be frustrated. It makes the reward at the end infinitely better than if you were simply handed it. At the time of writing this video, the number of free registrations on the official Wuthering Waves website is about to reach 23 million. This yeah, is with Kuro's that's a lot. drip marketing over the past year. It does not take into account the guerrilla marketing companies tend to do within the two week window of a game's launch. If you have not. And by the way, we're not even in that. We're not even in that yet. We're not even in the two weeks until launch. We are 20 days. As of the day I'm recording this, it is March 2nd. We are 20 days till launch. That's that's about three weeks. So, yeah, one day less than three weeks. Very, very excited about that. Pre-registered. I'm very excited. I, I requested that day off. I'm getting that day off. Yet. Oh, yeah. I highly encourage you to. We are streaming the game all day on that day. All day. I swear to God. That is a random day midweek. If I take that day off and anyone decides to spring anything up on me, I, I might actually be mad. Might actually be mad because I, I took that day off for me so I could grind the shit out of the brand new game and and stream it and you know have fun with my audience playing the brand new game. Do so. Learning as much about it as possible to make even more content on it. Creators may be worried for the game and are simply giving constructive criticism and feedback. I feel a ton of it is misguided and misinformed. Unfortunately for the gacha community, toxicity, drama, farming clickbait titles are the norm. So I have no ill will or feelings towards any creator expressing their concerns. At the end of the day, creators just want a fun and interactive game. A flopped game does nothing for anyone except the Genshin stands who hope every game flops so their child can remain in the limelight. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And thanks for making it through the video. I'd appreciate it if you guys drop me a subscribe. Real though, like how how exactly can Genshin be out for four years? And the players of it just want every game that's like it to fail? So that their game can stay in first place? Like, bro, your game's been your game has a four-year lead. 
If your game loses the spotlight, it is all your fucking game's fault. It is all that company's fault. All your game. That's it. There's no one else to blame. You have a four year lead on Weathering Waves. If Weathering Waves overtakes Genshin, that is <laughs> that is fucking insane. I think you need to reevaluate re your life. If uh if I don't know. If you're still hard standing Genshin over Weathering Waves, like if you're throwing hate at Weathering Waves for existing because it outpaced Genshin Impact when Genshin Impact had a four year lead, that's a problem. Right? If you're just playing Genshin Impact, like that's not a problem. But you know you know what I was trying to say there. Like, don't hard stand your game, talk shit about Weathering Waves and all that every five seconds, the moment Weathering Waves out, you know, outsells Genshin for a month or something. Like what you guys think in the comments. And thanks for making it through the video. I'd appreciate it if you guys drop me a subscribe or go follow my Twitch. Oh yeah. I'll be streaming Weathering Waves all day on the release. Absolutely. Day, guys, let's just let Kuro cook. We still have a couple weeks until the game launches. Real. All right. See ya. They have three weeks to put the finishing touches and and uh, release some more content. Thank you all for watching this video. If you really liked it, uh, give me a like and subscribe. Give Lalshinya a like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, this guy makes really really good videos. Um, I am really really excited to play Weathering Waves when it comes out in 20 days. So if you'll be there, let me know in the comments section because I will be streaming it all day that day. Peace.